just for the record, today I made myself a cofeta rosa. Like Mimi's one. How sad is that? Huh? Huh? End of story. The Diction and the Matrix. Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. There is no spoon? Then you'll see that it is not the spoon that bends. It is only yourself. You know, the movie is about, in fact, matter, matter, mater, matrix, being just a delusion or an illusion that you can uh, plasmate and, and, and fold and shape as you want, but not with your muscles. And, uh, well, singing, learning how to sing, it's, uh, that's pretty much what it is. It's you bending, and it's you taking the shape of what you're singing, and it's you embracing. But it's not you making it. When you are making it, you can tell because the result is bad and heavy and um, too human for the divinity of music. Uh, when somehow you stay tuned on the right road, and let it have you, things start working out. You know what I mean? Of course, we all know it's a matter of opening and closing and doubling. We know that. How to announce it without deforming? How to announce it without uh, squeezing? How to announce it without changing the color of the sound? Practically, how to do that? First of all, we have evidence that you can pronounce a language without pretty much moving, at least visibly moving, anything. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hit it. So no Aside from that, truth is that as I am speaking right now, the only thing I am thinking of, the only road that I'm following, is the thread of my thoughts. I am completely unaware of what my tongue, throat, muscles are doing. And in fact, if I tried to be more aware of what they are doing right now, I'd probably get stuck and get impeded. Whenever, um, whenever a singer really masters the prosody of the language, he in fact masters the technique and vice versa, because the technique of Italian bel canto was based on the language. Anyway, there is a way not to get stuck, and that way is to follow the road just mentally. Not to make the vowels, not to make the voice, but let the vowels make you. Physicist Helmholtz did this very interesting uh, experiment. Uh, he put boxes of different sizes and shapes around a vibrating central reactor, uh, and uh, he saw that accordingly with their shape and size, these boxes kind of sung different vowels. Alfred Tomatis speaks about this experiment in his uh, L'Oreille et la Voix, a Bible for singers that everyone should, be, uh, should read. This tells us that basically we are reflecting the sound, we are being that space that is able to embrace the sound and make it resound. There will be no spoon for us to bend 
It's just having the road so clear in your mind that this road keeps informing your body and it keeps informing it uh, on very, very, very subtle uh, levels. You don't have to do much when you're singing. In fact, you have to stay as loose as possible. The diction has to be nowhere. It has to be in your ear and it has to precede every, every, every sound. And the Zen exercise is not to respond with your body, but to keep this Chinese jars perpetually spinning and, and perpetually uh, fluid, never rigid, perpetually um, possibilistic, okay? Perpetually multidimensional, perpetually ready to go from narrow to wide, from dark to light. That's pretty much the secret. And there is no dividing line at all between good diction and good singing. We must never forget that all our vocal music, what we consider to be classical music, comes from the Gregorian music, comes from something that was spiritual. And the first exercise to do in order to learn, uh, well, of course it was Latin, but you know, it's pretty much ancient Italian, is to learn how to sing the Gregorian with that same approach. <laughs> Whatever, I made it up. where we come from. Diction has to dwell in some absolutely non-local spiritual space. The Oracle will see you now. 